In today's video, I'm going to be discussing five things not to do when going gray. Hi, I'm Lynn, and I inspire women to go naturally silver and embrace the best parts of themselves. So the first thing that I would encourage you not to do when going gray is to tell a lot of people that you're thinking of going gray, and here's why. Even though you may 100% think that you are ready to go gray and you're confident in your decision, when you start telling other people, you may not get the supportive response that you anticipate. Many people have very strong opinions about gray hair. And so if you don't surround yourself with people who are supportive and encouraging, you may second guess your decision. It's really important to keep in mind that when you hear negative opinions about your decision to go gray, that's coming from a place of insecurity on the part of the person who's giving you their opinion. But until you're a little more established in your transition to gray, that can just really add an additional element to it that you don't need. It's extremely important that you surround yourself with people or a person who's gonna be extremely supportive of your decision to go gray, especially in the early months. That can even boil down to just one friend or family member, but even if you have that one person, that's enough. And I know how it is when you first make a decision like this, you're excited about it and you wanna tell everybody. But just know that, like I said, people have very strong opinions about silver hair, especially if it's people that you're talking to who are still coloring their hair. Your decision to go gray might sort of trigger things in them and they may come out with their opinions that might actually make you second guess yourself. And don't forget to reach out to the online world of Silver Sisters. Many of us who have been on this journey, who are, who are on this journey currently, because we get it and we understand. So you're not alone. The second thing that I would caution you against doing on your transition to silver is to try to color blend your hair yourself. We've all seen those amazing transformations online. Jack Martin comes to mind. Women walk into the salon with a couple of inches of silver on the top of their head and they come out completely transitioned and a silver sister. But let me explain why you probably should not try to do that yourself and leave it to the professionals. Beauty supply store personnel may try to convince you that you can attempt to do this by yourself at home and will sell you some products, you know, some toner and some bleach and just tell you to have at it. But trust me when I say that unless you're experienced with using bleach, this can lead to disaster. If you've been coloring your hair or maybe highlighting your hair and that's what you're growing out, and now you're gonna go ahead and add bleach on top of that, you could wind up with a chemical haircut and that is probably not the look that you're going for. Go to a professional, somebody who knows hair color, somebody who can assess the integrity of your hair. They will consider the health and integrity of your hair before they apply bleach to it. Remember that if you're coming from a very dark box dye or even a dark professional dye, you have to lift that hair over several bleach processes to get it light enough in order to accept a silver toner. It's not just a matter of a one-time bleach. You're gonna bleach, it's gonna probably be orange at first. You're gonna have to bleach again and again and possibly again. And that is very damaging to the hair, extremely damaging. So you're really running the risk of having these fried ends that are probably gonna look way worse than if you would have just left it alone. Even if your hair was perfectly healthy, which I would suspect it's not because you've been dyeing it, even if your hair was 100% healthy, it's going to end up damaged after these processes. That's just the way bleach works. It has to lift out any color and to do that, it strips the hair and damages it. So a professional is going to be able to tell you if your hair can handle this bleaching process. Now, the third thing I would not do when you decide to go gray is to try to dye the ends of your hair. Don't try to dye the brassy ends of your hair back to the dark color. And here's why. As you grow out your silver hair, you're no longer depositing color onto the ends of your hair as you're growing them out. And what happens is that that color over time is just getting lifted out more and more and the ends are gonna start to turn orange. The dyed ends of your hair will turn brassy because you're no longer depositing color on them. So as time goes by, your hair is just, all those dye molecules are just getting lifted out of your hair more and more and eventually the hair can take on a not attractive orange tone. 
you might be desperate to do something about that. I went ahead and I put that dye on the ends of my hair and I did regret it. I actually made the mistake of doing this. I couldn't take the brassy ends of my hair. So I went out and I got the exact same dye that I had been dyeing my hair before I went silver and I dyed the ends of my hair. I lost centimeters of growth, which is incredible growth and every millimeter of growth counts when you're going gray. So when you think to yourself, well, I'll just dye them dark again. But by doing that, what you're actually doing is a couple of things. Number one, you're accentuating your demarcation line. So now you're gonna have an even starker contrast between your silver hair coming in and those dyed ends. The other problem with that is that it's going to be nearly impossible for you to not overlap into some of your precious silver hair growth. The best way to counteract that orange tone that's showing up on the dyed ends of your hair is with using blue shampoo because blue actually neutralizes orange tones. They're opposite each other on the color wheel. I have an entire video about blue shampoo you might want to check out. The fourth thing that you don't want to do when going gray is you don't necessarily want to opt for an incredibly drastic change in your hairstyle. You might be tempted to say, I'm just gonna chop off all my hair and be done with it and then grow it in. But if you're like me, I've had long hair most of my life. I've had long dark hair most of my life. And it's hard enough to make the decision to go gray, but also then to add on top of that a different hairstyle that I'm not accustomed to, that can be difficult. It might be very tempting to just chop off all your hair and grow out not only your silver, but the length at the same time. But if you have had long dark hair for many, many years and you decide to go silver, going silver and going shorter at the same time might be a lot to handle at once. It may be easier to grow accustomed to your silver growing in with your hair long and then decide later on that you wanna cut it shorter. You may find over time that you don't mind the demarcation line and you may choose to just leave it and leave your hair long through the entire grow out process. Most people with long hair who are toying with the idea of going silver think that they have to cut their hair short in order to do so and I'm here to tell you that you don't. I chose to keep my hair long throughout my grow out process and to be honest with you, I've kind of grown accustomed to that demarcation line I'm gonna miss these ends when they're finally gone. Going gray itself is a big decision and making too many decisions at once can be kind of shocking. But if you've had short hair before and you don't mind cutting it short and wearing it short while you grow out, then that obviously is going to speed up your transition. And the fifth and final thing that you shouldn't do when going gray is assume that you have to throw out all of your clothing throw out all of your makeup and your jewelry because you're assuming that those colors are no longer going to work with your silver hair. That is not exactly true. I have found that I can still wear warm, earthy tones, but I can also jazz it up with some brighter colors that I probably never would have even considered before. So just wear what looks good on your skin tone and what you feel good in. I found that everything I used to wear still works. But the increase in confidence that I have since ditching the dye has led me to play with more color than I would have in the past. I honestly think that everything goes with silver, especially bright red lipstick, which is something I would have never worn in the past. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching.